you ever have a day when you just feel like you're at you're ready to blow your top? It just seems like when things aren't going your way, something just has to throw a stick in it. So um, earlier this week, Dana and I were making a necessary trip to Department of Motor Vehicle. And uh, we were heading to the one in Orange. And uh, we were already in a hurry to get back. So we weren't really rushing, but we there was things pressing on us to do at home, but we had to make this trip. So we um, drove to the Orange Department Motor Vehicle. We drove to Orange DMV and we got there and the lines were so long that uh, we decided it'd be worth to go to Culpeper, the full service DMV. Every time we've been there, it's been very short lines. So um, we drove, to, we're on our way to Culpeper, about halfway there. So we've been in the, it, we've been in the car now for 40 minutes or so. And I nonchalantly asked Dana, I don't even know why I asked because I already thought I knew the answer. I said, um, do you have the paperwork? At which she responded to my utter shock. Um, no, I thought you did. So I just felt like smoke was going to come out of my ears. I was smoldering. Um, couldn't find a place to turn around. Finally found a place to turn around. And inside my head were screaming thoughts. I had this need to blame. Have you been there? I just wanted to say, Dana, you always bring the paperwork. Why didn't you bring the paperwork this time? And I was just, I was just steaming. I was just boiling. And um, unfortunately, I said nothing. So there I was, smoldering, using all the volition I could muster to not say a word. Well, come to find out that my lovely wife also had a couple thoughts of her own. And uh, <clears throat> turns out she was thinking to herself, why would I bring the paperwork? It's his truck. So fortunately, she also said nothing. And we sat there in, in silence, and I can't speak for her, but I prayed. I prayed a very short prayer. God, help me. Uh, one of my favorites. And uh, it was the longest five or ten minutes in that ride. Seemed like forever. And finally, we just started talking about how we were feeling. And we started talking about how um, this could be a test, this could be the evil one, that it really doesn't matter whose fault it is. We're a team. So I find it interesting, though, what's at stake in situations like that. The very unity of the marriage, at least for that moment, maybe for a couple hours, um, when there's grumbling, complaining, um, blaming, it, it breaks up the unity. And the Bible says that we have an enemy who wants to conquer and divide and separate us. All the while, we have a Lord, Jesus Christ, who said, be united so the world will know that the Father sent the Son. Be united. So that brings us to today's text. You know, in Philippians, we're in chapter 2. Paul wrote, Therefore, my dear friends, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. First thing in the text that strikes me is the word therefore. You always want to ask, what is the therefore, therefore? And if you look to what preceded this text, 
you see that Paul is really packing his, he's really bringing a strong argument because what he brings up in the previous text, if you see last week's sermon, the very heart of Christianity, that Jesus, before he came, was seated at the was seated in heaven, the second person of the Trinity, all glory being worshipped. He left that high place and came low, and he humbled himself. And he humbled himself to be a servant to us. And he humbled himself further to be obedient to death. Obedient to the Father all the way to his own death, even death on a cross. And Paul writes to us today, Therefore, work out your salvation work it out. It's not something we work for. Romans 4, 5 says, but to him who does not work, but believeth in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted towards him. It's credited him with righteousness, the very righteousness of God. No, we don't work for our salvation. It's a gift. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, by grace you have been saved by faith, not of works. It's a gift so that no one can boast. Salvation is a free gift. It's not something we in for. Earn. It's not something we earn. God values humility, not righteousness. Our righteousness, our good works are like filthy rags. They mean nothing to God. Not as far as our salvation is concerned. We need a perfect sacrifice. You know, I find this truth to give the scripture so much credibility. No person, man or woman, would come up with a religion. In fact, there's no other religion that does this, where men and women cannot, men and women cannot earn their salvation. It's a free gift. Well, here we come to today's text, and Paul says, but work it out. You're not done. You have something to do. And then he goes on to say, here's how you work it out. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. You want to know how to work out your salvation? Here's how. Let me just give you an example, Paul saying, don't argue, don't blame, and don't complain. He's comparing the Philippians to the Israelites in the wilderness where they grumbled and complained. They wanted to stone Moses, Moses feared. Paul saying, work out your salvation. We have what they don't have. On this Pentecost Sunday, we are reminded that we have the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. The Bible says that he who raised Jesus from the dead, that same power lives in us. That's a lot of power. So work out your salvation. And yet, we have a choice to make. What voice will we listen to? I was given a, a very neat, I was sent a very neat video this week about a man who said he felt God tapping, on his, tapping him on his shoulder to say kind words to someone else sitting near him. I think he was in a restaurant. And how God used that. Well, if, God, if, if you compare the Holy Spirit to a tap on the shoulder. Well, then in times like this, times where we have outside pressure and anxiety coming in upon us, it will, it will be times like this when temptation will strike, temptation to argue, complain, or blame. So if the Holy Spirit's tapping you on the shoulder, the sinful nature is shaking you on both. Listen to me. No. No, don't. It actually brought Dana and I closer together because we just sat there and confessed to each other on our way back to get the paperwork. And it even prepared us for what was to come because after we went all the way home and got the paperwork, we did drive all the way to Culpeper, even though we checked online to make, you know, to see if it was closed, make the hours were, we were good. Uh, we got there and there was a note on the door that Culpepper DMV was closed. Um, no, you know, indefinitely till further notice. We ended up going back to Orange, right where we started. <laughs> but, you know, because we 
worked it out early on. We were ready for that. So Paul's saying, you have the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, you know, part of the text here, Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, take it seriously. Take, do it with reverence. It must be an important issue. After all, he brought in the, the humility of Christ coming down here to save us. It must be a really big deal. It must be pretty heavy. It must be pretty weighty. And now Paul's saying, the weight's on you. The weight's on me. What will you choose in that moment? Will you be grateful? Will you be honest and share vulnerably what you're going through, what you're thinking? And know that, hey, that's not me. That's my sinful nature. You know, Paul said in Romans 7 that I don't do what I want to do. The very things I want to do, I don't do. So it's not me who wants to do the bad things. It's my, you know, it's my sinful nature. Because God here works in us to will. He's given us the will to want to do right, to want to have unity, to want to let things go, to want to love, to choose kindness, to choose forbearance and even long suffering. So Paul says, for God, it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. You know, that's what this is all about. It says in Ephesians that before the foundations of the world, it was God's purpose to work in us that we would look like Christ, that he would work in us. But we have our part to do. Work it out, Paul says. Work out your salvation. He says, continuing with verse 15, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. They had outside pressures. Warped and crooked generation also comes from the Exodus story where those who fell in the wilderness because of their hard hearts were called, a, you know, a warped and crooked generation. And Paul's saying, you know, you live around that. And notice he's talking about the chosen ones, the Israelites. It might even be those who consider themselves Christians who pressure you, who try to bring you down, who try to be, you know, bring you negative, who might stimulate, might, might get you to complain more. Paul says, do all things without grumbling and complaining so that you, it, the next verse says, it's so great. It says, so that you will shine among them like stars in the sky. When can you see the stars the best? When it's pitch black outside. It doesn't matter how bad things get. Paul's saying, Live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yield. Yield to God. Do all things. All things. Notice. All, everything. Without grumbling or complaining. Listening to the Holy Spirit. Then you will shine like stars in the sky and hold firmly to the word of life. You are representing and I'm representing the gospel. We are, you know, a system that's being taxed by outside pressure with this pandemic Maybe there's sickness in your family or people you know. Maybe it's your job. Whatever it is, these outside pressures affect us. They affect our families. It weighs on us. We're, we're more likely to argue and, and blame. And, and the unity gets, you know, it's taking hits. And not just our families, but also our church. We are meeting and soon we're hoping to meet on Father's Day. And things are going to be different and we're going to feel that the pressure from the outside world. And we're going to, we don't like change. And there's going to be changes like masks, like communion is going to be different. Or um, hymns, songs, music. God cares about unity. He wants us to come together to be long suffering with one another so that we can be lights to the world. The torch is passed to the torch is passed to us. You know, Paul ends this section with, and then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ when he dies, that I did not run or labor in vain, 
But even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Paul is giving us a real model what it means to follow Christ. It doesn't mean he didn't struggle. It doesn't mean like it doesn't mean that on the inside he wanted to explode. But he held on. He held on to the gospel, the pure gospel that it's a gift. But now we have to work it out. Now it falls on us. And you know when we get together, when you're when you're with your family, in your marriage, or even if it's or whether it's the family or it's the church, if there's a greater purpose, something outside yourself, something bigger than yourself, it helps us be united to work together for the glory of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And by the way, she does usually always bring the paperwork. I'd like to have a word of prayer with you. Please join me. Gracious Lord, we come to you based on the work Jesus did, the sacrifice Christ did on that cross, that our faith connects us to that grace. And so we stand before you with confidence, knowing it's not based on us. Even if we blow it, even if we do grumble and complain, We can come back to you and and ask for help to do it again, to do it better next time. So, Lord, maybe someone's listening who who doesn't know you, that wants to know what it's like to be a child of God, who wants to step into the family, the family of God. I invite you to pray with me now. Lord, I come before you as a sinner. I grumble and I complain. I uh, struggle with negative attitudes. There's sin in my life that I, I know is wrong, and I come before you confessing that I can't save myself. I accept the free gift of what you did on the cross for me. Thank you, Lord, for that salvation. Help me to believe the truth that I am now your child. I've been made righteous in your sight. Me and you are good because it's based on what Jesus did. Lord, help me to know what it means in every area of my life that you are my savior and help me to grow to learn what it means to find full life in your name by learning what it means that you're my Lord. Welcome into the family of God. As I continue to pray, I want to pray for uh, those listening, for those who are hurting and lonely. Um, Lord, bless them, comfort them, let them know you are near, that you are full of grace and love for them. Uh, those who are going through grief, I pray you would bring them comfort, Lord. We ask that you would bless our board and our leaders as we work on coming back together with, and, and guide them with every decision, Lord. Use our church to be lights, a light to the world. For your glory, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I encourage you to uh, make sure you listen to the music this week. Um, we got some... We have a hymn, we have a couple contemporary songs. The music team works so hard to get um, a, number of, a number of songs to us every week for the radio broadcast. Um, you can hear the radio broadcast on uh, our website. You can hear um, other sermons and uh, general information. Uh, please contact me if I can help you or to be on the prayer list I send out um, pretty regularly. Thanks for listening. God bless you. I hope to see you soon.